30 here tonight. Jason Terry, good defense. Wade from behind takes it away. Tomers, oh, dang! What's good, everybody? Welcome back. Now, it's no secret that LeBron James is the most dominant player in NBA history. All of you Mike fanboys, keep your comments to yourself. LeBron James has been consistently getting better each year. Besides his rookie year, he has almost averaged a triple-double every season. He is in his mid-30s and he still hasn't shown any sign of him slowing down. He's going on 35 years old now and he is still capable of leading the Lakers to a championship. I personally don't see it happening but a lot of fans are saying it is possible so we just gonna have to wait and see. I know I have a lot of young subscribers so they didn't get to see LeBron in his prime years. Even though he is still the best in the league, 2019 LeBron James is just a watered down version of him. Really, most of the teams in the NBA can give him competition now, but back in the day, there was literally no contest. No one could guard him, but he could guard anyone. There was a point in time where he could defend any position, so he was locking up point guards and he was blocking centers in the paint. How quickly they forget. But over the years, there have been a lot of star players that faced up against him, and a lot of them have failed. LeBron James has given out a lot of heartbreak, and me being a Chicago Bulls fan, I really felt the pain. So throughout this video, I'm going to talk about 5 players who had a lot of potential, but LeBron James ended up destroying their legacy, as usual. But before we get into this video, make sure you leave a like and comment down below. Whoever has the most interesting comment, I'm going to shout them out in my next video. I got you. And make sure that you follow me on my social media, so I'll leave the link down in the description. And I'll be responding to all my DMs too, so hit me up. But enough of all that talking, let's get back into this video. No more beating around the bush, we just gonna jump into this list. Number 5 on the list, we have Gordon Hayward. Now keep in mind, the reason I made this list is because these players have had a huge impact on the basketball culture, believe it or not. So just so y'all can see where I'm coming from, let me give you a little background on Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward came into the league in 2010. He was drafted to the Utah Jazz. This was around the time when Darren Williams was the star of the team. But that's a whole other story on what happened to his career. But after he left, the Utah Jazz had to go through a rebuilding process. With them being one of the worst teams in the league, he just kept working on this game. And with the right pieces, they started to get better every year. And as the team got better, so did Gordon Hayward. He became the star player and he even led his team back to the playoffs in 2017. It was almost a decade of them not making it to the playoffs. And to add on to that, he was selected to his first All-Star game. Now the reason that I say that he impacted the basketball culture is really because he is white. I mean just think about it. How many white players in the NBA do you know that is averaging 20 points, that a go-to player on their team, and was an all-star in the same year? If y'all think of somebody, let me know down in the comment section. He really just gave all my white hoopers out there somebody to look up to. And it's not like he was just this stereotype white hooper who just knows how to shoot. This dude really could do it all, and he was exciting to watch. I even came close to getting his jersey, no lie. Everybody was geeked when they found out that he was going to play with the Celtics. People was just waiting to see that combo of him with Kyrie Irving. They were going to shake up the league, but one day LeBron ruined that chance. It happened in their first game in the first quarter. Gordon Hayward went up for the alley-oop and LeBron James tried to block it. And Gordon Hayward landed awkward and broke his leg. I'm going to show y'all the footage. It's a little graphic, so if you want to skip this part of the video, now is the time to do so. We hit the biggest shot in Cavs history. They're going up. Oh my goodness. Hayward came down so hard. Okay. Hayward broke his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. This injury went viral, and ever since that injury, he hasn't been able to get back to his regular self. It's really sad to see. Hopefully, Gordon Hayward can come back and get to hooping like he was not too long ago. I know this injury isn't anything to joke about, but I ain't gonna lie, this meme had me crying when it first happened. Coming up at number 4 on the list, we have Jeremy Lin. Now besides when Yao Ming was dominating the NBA, there isn't too many Asian players putting on for their culture like that. But that's when the Lin Sanity era came in. On December 27th in 2011, Jeremy Lin signed with the New York Knicks. At the time, no one knew who this guy was. He was only there because the Knicks were battling a lot of injuries. He was supposed to be a temporary solution. But I don't know, one day something just woke him up. Because he just started putting up big numbers. 
He just had a lot of 30 point games and he was hitting a lot of game winners too. After him tearing up the NBA, eventually they decided to put him in a starting lineup. And for his first 12 starts, he went from barely playing to averaging 23 points and 9 assists. At this time, it was safe to say that he was by far the most popular player in the league. But LeBron is the best player to ever play the game, and he wasn't having that. Their teams ended up facing each other, and LeBron James and the Heat were just determined to lock this dude up. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, they would not let this guy score at all. Jeremy Lin was hot at the time, but he just wasn't ready for that level of intensity yet. He finished the game shooting 111 from the field, and he had 8 turnovers. It was just a nightmare for real. But ever since he faced off against LeBron that game, he just wasn't the same. He's been bouncing around from different teams and he was battling a lot of injuries. And now he is not even in the NBA anymore, all thanks to LeBron. Coming in at number 3, we have the one and only Derrick Rose and the whole Bulls organization, honestly. I know a lot of D-Rose fans are not going to agree with what I'm about to say, but the truth hurts. I understand where y'all coming from, believe me I do. Like I said earlier, I was a big Bulls fan back in that time too. We were fed up about how people kept bringing up Michael Jordan for our success. We was just tired of reminiscing on the old days. We wanted something new. And as most of you should know, Derrick Rose was too big, too strong, too fast, too good. We were the best team in the East every season during that era. And we were stacked for real from the starting lineup to the bench. But we could never manage to get past LeBron for some reason. It's like he always played his best against us. I remember the exact moment that I accepted that we would never win a championship. Let me show y'all the footage. The Miami Heat have cut from behind to defeat the Chicago Bulls 83-80. And Miami is headed to the NBA Finals for another... As we all remember, Derrick Rose ended up getting injured later on. So of course when D-Rose got hurt, we didn't have a chance. But not too long ago, we had another opportunity to beat him and finally have a shot at winning a championship. And when D-Rose hit that game winning three off the glass to put us up 2-1, I just knew this was our time. But as always, LeBron James always finds a way. As of now in the present day, that core group from the Bulls has split up completely and it's a whole different roster. Sad to say that we would never have that satisfaction of beating LeBron. Coming in at number 2, believe it or not, we have Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant was a problem even before he joined the Warriors. A 7 footer who averages 30 points is just unheard of, really. He became a franchise player for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He was putting up numbers and he had a team that could contend for the championship almost each year. So people couldn't understand why he would want to leave and go play for the Warriors. But it's simple, LeBron James is the cause. Don't get me wrong, Kevin Durant is one of the greatest basketball players in the game, but he has always been considered the second best player in the world. He even had the chance to take the throne from LeBron back in 2012. And believe it or not, the Thunder were actually favored to win that championship series. But that's LeBron for you. It got to a point where KD couldn't take it anymore. So he made the decision that changed the lead. He joined the Golden State Warriors. And with him teaming up with them, he was finally able to beat LeBron James easily. But with him joining one of the best teams ever assembled, he took a lot of backlash and a lot of people turned on him. It's a cold world. And last, but certainly not least, number one on the list, we have Stephen Curry. Now, I know what y'all thinking. Stephen Curry is one of the best point guards of this generation. The best shooter to ever play the game. And he's most likely going to be the first ballot Hall of Famer, easily. How could LeBron have possibly destroyed his legacy? Let me explain. Back in 2015, Steph Curry became the first player in NBA history to be selected as the MVP by unanimous vote. Steph Curry was on fire that year, he just couldn't miss. That was the year when he was hitting all those buzzer beater full court shots. All of this was the same year when LeBron had made his return to Cleveland. LeBron James had a lot of hype because he was supposed to finally bring a championship to the land. But as we remember, Stephen Curry got them boys out of the. They beat the Cavs in the finals and Stephen Curry became the face of the NBA overnight. Just the basketball culture now revolved around him. Ever since Curry became popular, the game has really started to rely on a three ball. And there was a short lived time when everyone was trying to do his signature floater. A lot of people failed miserably, it's not for everyone. 
but believe it or not he was even being compared to Michael Jordan. They were talking about the fact that they both completely changed the game, which is facts. And last but not least, he did the impossible. He raised the sales in Under Armour basketball shoes. No one was really copping Under Armour shoes like that until Steph Curry won his MVP. It was just embarrassing if you had some before that. Going into that next season, he was looking to build upon his legacy, and that's exactly what he did. The Warriors set the best record of all time with 73 wins and 9 losses. They were the favorites to win it all, but things changed when they met LeBron in the finals for some reason. The series went all the way to game 7, and thanks to Kyrie for knocking down that game winning 3, LeBron and the Cavs barely escaped with the win. Some people say that the refs rigged the game in their favor, but a win is a win. Curry was in a shooting slump that whole series, and it was put on display in front of the whole world, and just like that. Any small talk of Stephen Curry being the GOAT was destroyed, and Under Armour basketball shoe sales instantly went down. I haven't worn mine since. Peace. Two fellas, and we smoking on dope, baby. That's what you smelling. Don't rely on them, they go ghost when you need them. Make a nigga go ghost when one shot he bleeding. Then the ambulance rush to see if he breathing. I can't tell that boy the game, he was telling me figures. No reminiscing days, hoes telling me beat it. Now they calling on my phone and they showing me. Bleeding.